is arguably the best tool that I've added to my business in a very long time. So I know AI is a super hot topic right now, and you may feel strongly about it in one direction or another. You might think it's the greatest thing ever, or you might be thinking it's terrible. All very valid concerns, all very valid opinions, but I wanna take some time today to talk through how I'm using it in my business as a way to enhance the work that I'm doing, not to replace me, not to take away all my creativity, not to get my job taken away, but instead to use it as simply what it is, a tool in my business. And I simply reframe the way that I use AI as a tool to help me save time, money, and energy so that I can do the deeper, more impactful work and help more people. And my favorite AI tool that I've been using in my business is actually Quad. And there's a few ways that I've customized and optimized it to make sure that this tool is working the most efficiently for me. And honestly, I'm one of the people in the bucket of, I don't think AI is going to take my marketing job away. Instead, I think it's going to enhance the way that we work as marketers. As cocky as it sounds, I still think I will always be needed. I will always need to have some sort of human experience injected into marketing. And that's why AI tools don't necessarily scare me right now. I know they can be a little bit scary, uh, potentially what they can do in the future. But no matter what, the way that I approach using AI tools is that I always wanna give it my human input first so that it can give me a human-like output. And before I dive into the tutorial aspect of how I use Claude in my business, I think there's a few things that we need to address when it comes to using AI in our businesses and using it ethically and effectively. So first let's get into some AI do's and don'ts. So number one is going to be something I've already alluded to, but you need to have good input. So maybe you've previously logged into an AI tool and you say something along the lines of, hey, give me 10 content ideas. I'm a, you insert what you are, in blank industry that you're in something along those lines. And you tell it to generate those content ideas and those content ideas are terrible. Most of the time they're very generic, most of the time they're very boring and they have no flair, they have no personality and they involve nothing about you, about your brand. And honestly, I did this in the beginning and I was very, very frustrated. And I thought to myself, I was like, how are people using this tool? I am not getting good responses. I actually gave it a lot more credit than I thought and I thought it was smarter than that. And actually AI is truly kind of dumb. And when people are talking about training their AI tool, it's more so just giving it very valuable input and telling it exactly what you want it to do. So anytime that I approach prompting AI, I always say, here is what I want you to act as. Here's exactly what I want you to do. Here's the outcome that I expect. And this is the format that I want it in. And then I always try and give it something to work off of. Again, I always want to give it human input. Sometimes I copy and paste the transcript of a YouTube video that I created. Sometimes I grab a blog post that I've written before or a piece of content that I've created and I will drop it in there as a framework of, hey, here are my thoughts, my ideas, my brand voice. Here's the topic. I always want to give it something so that it's not just pulling from the ether. And this helps in a couple of ways. It learns to understand who you are. It uses your own IP and you're not ripping off other people. You are giving it the context in which you want it to create for you. So let's dive into a quick example here of what a good prompt is versus a bad prompt. So here's something that I see a lot of people trying to do with these AI tools. They'll go into there and say, I'm an online business coach, generate 20 content ideas. If we want to make this better, here's a prompt that you could use instead. I'm an online business coach who helps women find their self-worth and create an online business that aligns with their passions so they can leave their corporate career that they hate. I want you to act as my social media strategist and help me develop 20 video ideas that I can record for TikTok. I really want to touch on my customers' pain points that they can't stand the job they are in, they don't know how to translate their skills into a business, and they just don't know where to start when it comes to running a business. And now, that sounds a whole hell of a lot better, right? right? And no matter what output it gives you, you always need to understand these are chat-based AI tools. So don't be afraid to have a chat with it. If it doesn't give you something you want, say, hey, can we modify this part? Hey, can you retry it in this context? Go back and forth with the AI tool. That's the power in it. All right, moving into number two, you need to always, always, always edit the output. So AI tools are still learning and they are not 100% correct 
literally ever. And you should be editing the output for a few different reasons. We want to avoid taking somebody else's IP, somebody else's copyright. You want to make sure that whatever the output is uses your voice, your brand tone, your brand anything. We want to always make it sound like you. And for the obvious fact checking, if it's giving you statistics or facts or figures or reporting on something, we always want to make sure we are fact checking it with a reliable source of information. So even when you do give it great input and it gives you great output, you should still always be editing it. This is a practice that I have when using these AI tools. So this is not only a good rule to follow ethically speaking, but it's also just a great way to humanize whatever that output is, especially if you're using these tools for content creation like I am. And I'm all about efficiency and that's why I've leaned into using these tools. But if it doesn't sound like me and if it sounds like a robot wrote it, I'm doing it all wrong. So when I use these tools, here's kind of what my process looks like. I create really strong prompts by giving Claude as many details as I can. I always we start with a base layer of content that I have created from scratch and from my own brain. I mainly use Claude to help me think of new and creative ways to say things, or I use these tools to help me rewrite and repurpose my own words and thoughts. And of course, like I just mentioned, I read through everything and I add in my own personality. I edit out all the weird stuff and put some flair into it with curse words and emojis. Okay, so as you start to get Claude set up, there are a few foundational things that you need to understand about how Claude operates. It's slightly different from ChatGPT, but ChatGPT is also starting to introduce some of these concepts as well. So we obviously have the typical new chat over here. You can see all of your different chats throughout here, but the cool part about Claude um, they were kind of first to market, or at least between ChatGPT and Claude. They have something known as projects, and this is where I believe the magic happens. So basically, I have different projects for different assets of my business. I have one for speaking in workshops. I have some for client work, my own brand and content strategy, my vision casting, my content ideation and brainstorming. I have my content system. I have the content system, which this is focused on my course and like helping my students. But I want to come into the one that I use vast majority of the time and show you some of the different things. So what you are going to want to do before you start any chats. So these are all different chats. We need to start working on the project knowledge. So this is something very standard. I set project instructions for every single one of my projects and they all are relatively the same. It's a very common prompt used throughout the AI world, but for all requests, keep the following in mind, just basically my standard rules across chats, no matter what. And then for this specific project, I said, um, basically, I want them to always refer to the custom AI instructions, meaning this is a document that I have created with my way of repurposing content using AI, and then always reference my brand blueprint. So this just gives all of the important information and I'll show you what those two documents look like. So first and foremost, my brand blueprint. So this is an 80 page document with all of my brand in it, basically my core identity, uh, my values, my mission, my vision. So if you are wanting to do something like this, there is a course and I have linked it in the description below that you can take with authentic AI. And I'm telling you, this thing is pure gold. This one was built specifically for ChatGPT but I still use it in Claude because this helps it understand who I am, my brand, my specific offerings and things like that. This is key. You obviously don't need to do an 80 page document if you don't want, but giving it some type of document with brand information is very, very important. Now for the custom instructions, obviously you can see it all in here. This is something that I have created and I have written, and this is my framework for repurposing my content. So what I always do is I upload my entire YouTube transcript and I say, hey, when a user asks for help writing a YouTube video outline, here's the instructions. When a user asks for help writing a blog post, take the information in the transcript, grab keywords and write a blog post is at least 1500 words. So again, these are the custom instructions. So the project knowledge will tell it to always use this as a brand reference for writing, for uh, anything that requires me. And then the custom instructions will help it for content repurposing. Now you can see that I have a lot of different chats. I open up a new chat for every new podcast and every new YouTube video. I had it help me repurpose this podcast that I created. So what I did is I like, hey, help me optimize this podcast. And it gave me some title options, some podcast descriptions, some show notes. I also asked it to help me write a newsletter. And again, it's always pulling information based on the transcript I gave it, based on the instructions, based on the documents, based on like anything that I have given it. And in my custom AI instructions, I tell my chats to always use information from my brand and don't pull it and just scrape it from the internet and I get far better results. 
So you can see that, again, I went through this and basically had it help me write blog posts and newsletters and even threads. I was like, can you pull out 30 different threads for me? Again, I do not copy and paste this and use this across my content just as is. I always edit and modify it. But I just wanted to quickly show you how I use this vast majority of time in my business. So no matter how you decide to use AI and what tools you decide to incorporate into your business, just know that these are the things that you need to keep in mind as you start to work with this technology. And as this technology advances, this video will probably outdate itself very quickly. And just know though that you're always gonna be constantly learning, always revising input, output, and working with these tools together. That is the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that this is not a tool to replace anything. It is a tool to assist you in your business. Now, if you have any questions about anything, drop them in the comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.